Witam po przerwie. Teraz zapraszam na drugi wykład. Poprowadzi go Stefan Kukmanczop i wykład nosi tytuł The Power of Refactoring. Poproszę o brawa. Well, good morning everyone. Um, welcome. Uh, today I will be talking about uh, refactoring a bit and um, what we will do is uh, we'll look at what is refactoring, um, what is the definition of refactoring um, and then uh, go also into why you should try to refactor. Um, so um, after that, we'll go also into uh, some requirements um, that are necessary for successful refactoring. And um, I'll show some examples on how to actually refactor. Um, the examples will be in PHP, but it, they are quite simple. So I guess everyone will understand it. Um, syntax may be a bit different from the language of choice for you guys. It shouldn't be too hard. Um, but, well, let me just first introduce myself. Um, now, everyone uh, that is not from the Netherlands has a hard time pronouncing my name. Um, my name is Stefan Koopmanschap. And uh, just as um, Ivo, uh, I also work uh, at iBuildings. I'm a professional services consultant there, which basically means um, I do, well, anything that needs to be done. I, I can work on uh, development projects, but I can also go into a company and do an audit or help them with problems uh, or do training. Anything that needs to be done, I can do it, or at least I pretend to. Um, before iBuildings, I also worked for other companies. I worked for TomTom, for instance, uh, for the navigation devices on the server side, and I did a lot of projects uh, for instance, for Dutch government or for media organizations. Um, but everything uh, I did so far has been done in PHP. Uh, I'm really a PHP guy. Um, so I know there are other languages out there. I know that Python is out there and I know slightly how it looks. I know Ruby is out there. I know slightly how it looks. But I just can't really work with it. I've, I never did really. Maybe I should sit down sometime and learn some other languages. Um, this is something that, yeah, I, I can do. I mean, I, I learned PHP by myself. I didn't get any education in PHP. Um, and so I guess I should sit down sometime and uh, learn something else. At home I'm married. I have two kids, six cats, and a bunch of fish. Um, um, I'm since, well, since I started working for iBuildings, I'm a big fan of Apple. Before that, I was a Linux user, um, and very, very long time ago, I was a Windows user. I'm also a music addict, um, and I am an advocate of the PHP MVC framework called Symphony. Um, how many of you are familiar with Symphony? Oh, that's more than I expected. That's very good. Um, so you will be able to find me also a lot in the Symphony community. Now let's. Um, forget who I am again and go into refactoring. Um, first, let's have a, have a look at the definition of, of what is refactoring. Now, this one is by Martin Fowler. He is probably the godfather of refactoring. Um, it is a, a quite, I'm not going to talk and give, it, give the whole definition, um, but it's quite a, a big definition. Uh, it is clear, but a bit too big for my taste. So I like Wikipedia, because Wikipedia simplifies things. Wikipedia says, code refactoring is the process of changing a computer program's code to make it am amenable to change, improve its readability, or simplify its structure while preserving its existing functionality. Now, sorry. This is, um, I think, much easier and because you can break this down into two parts. First, the what. Code refactoring is the process of changing a computer program's internal structure without modifying its e external behavior existing functionality. Um, 
you, can, you will be changing your code, um, changing the, the implementation of the code, but you will remain, uh, you will keep the existing functionality. Um, and, and this is an important part of refactoring. And people may think that this is useless because why would you change code that is working and change it to exact, do exactly the same? Um, but this is because this is only part. This is just the what. Um, the why is very important as well um, because this is usually done to improve code readability, simplify code structure, change code to adhere to given programming paradigm, improve maintainability or improve extensibility. Um, so changing your code has some important reasons. There is um, a reason to change the code while keeping uh, the same functionality. So let's have a, a short look at um, these reasons. Improve readability. Why would we want to improve the readability of the code? Uh, because the code will st still do the same thing. Well, there's several reasons for this. Um, one of the reasons is, for instance, that um, readable code takes less time to get into. Um, if you have a code base, and um, for instance, it, it is an existing code base, it's a pro project that you worked on a while ago, and you have to do something on this again, uh, but it's a while since you've touched the code, if the code is a mess, then it will take you a lot of time to get into the code again and understand, oh, what did I do? Why did I do this back then? This takes a lot of time, and as you know, time is money, so it also costs a lot of money to get you into the code again. If you make your code more readable, um, it will be easier for you to look at this code and see, ah, this is why I did that. And then um, you can get to the point and make your changes as you want to much quicker. Also, um, if you introduce new developers to your project or you have new people joining your company, um, if you have more readable code, it will also for them be easier to get into your projects and understand the code and understand the structure. Uh, so also the time that you need to invest into getting new developers up to speed with your code is less. And again, this costs less money, uh, so the managers will also be happy. And uh, people, actually, the new developers will also be happy because, well, as most of you probably know, if you're a developer, um, it's more fun to actually do the work than to start understanding the code. So everyone will be happy. Uh, if the code is more readable. Another thing, and this is that I experience a lot being a consultant and looking into other people's code, is that for me, as this expensive consultant coming into a company, um, it is easier for me as well to get into the code. And now, I'm sure that uh, everyone can uh, just hire me for a week, but if I can get the same thing done in two days, if the code is more readable, this is less expensive for you. And my boss won't mind that uh, you hire me for five days. Uh, but if I can do it in two, why hire me for five days? Now, aside from the readability part, the maintainability part is also important. Um, at some point, when you put your project into production, uh, you come into the maintain, uh, maintenance phase. And if your code is uh, more readable, it is also more maintainable, which means that you can understand your code better and take less time in making changes or fixing bugs, stuff like that. Now, Twitter is just an example. Um, you, you want, Twitter doesn't make money yet, so 